ask you, okay, fascinating project that you're thinking about there mm -hmm. was the, the, the slavery material and kind of the pushback against lost cause. Um, I seem to remember that you actually also did, and I think that was in conjunction with students, a, a digital project with regard to John Brown's trial, right? Correct. Yeah, so we worked on, so it was through um, the, the Center for Immersive Learning at Shenandoah. And it was, a, it was a contract project for the Shenandoah Valley Battlefields National Historic District, which manages you know, a whole host of sites throughout the valley. And they're in the process of, of redesigning um, a museum they have in Winchester. And so we, we were asked to create this 360 virtual reality experience of, of John Brown's trial. And it was a challenge. I worked, I worked on the script for this thing. Um, I had never written a script for anything before in my life. And it was a, it was a real challenge to basically condense John Brown's trial, its legacy, how a multitude of people reacted into like seven minutes. Ooh. So yeah, it, 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 but I think what it does is it really, you know, lays out I think some of the some of the things I talk about in that in that chapter in the book is is how African Americans are reacting to Brown. That they're not just totally unaware um, of what's going on. But yeah, that was a that was certainly a, a neat project um, to work on. And again, I think it shows that because you know you're trying to engage the public about very complex things and and you know, how do you do that? And yes, ideally, everybody's going to pick up our books and read our books. Um, but as we hope. Um, but to to be able to just maybe tease them a little bit to, to mm -hmm. pique that curiosity in a seven minute VR experience, hopefully that might compel someone to say, hey, you know, maybe we should read about Brown's Raid or, or whatever, whatever the case might be. That, that sounds like a fascinating item that you were dealing with too there. And um, now the, the McCormick Institute, your office um, as, the, as the Institute centerpiece, mm -hmm. you also have that battlefield that you had donated that kind of sprung this into existence mm -hmm. all and gave you kind of the opportunity to do all these, um, all this work with Shenandoah University. Mm -hmm. Um, how much do you think that through the battlefield, especially, you will be able to kind of communicate the stories from your book um, to mm -hmm. a general public? Yeah. So, yeah, you're, you're right. So we, I, I think we're unique in Civil War Institutes that we are, I think, the only one, and someone can correct me if I'm wrong, but we are the only one that owns its own battlefield. Well, uh, so it's... would like to own Gettysburg. But yeah, but he doesn't. <laughs> Um, so yeah, it's, it's 195 acres that we own right along the banks of the Shenandoah River in Clark County. And what makes that property so important is not just the battle that was fought there. And we use that to talk about, you know, individual soldier experiences and how, you know, what happens in combat impacts soldiers and their families and all that kind of stuff. But that was once part of an 1100 acre plantation that was owned by Judge Richard Parker. So we have connections to, to Judge Parker, who presided over John Brown's trial. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a connection to a, a, you know, a, a substantial plantation right. um, in the Shenandoah Valley. So you know, one of the challenges that, that we confront is always, again, you know, human resources. And, and I know people like to think you know, institutes have this, this massive payroll Mm -hmm. um, and essentially, it's it's me as the director um, and a work study student and students who I can contract out with yeah. uh, to do different work. So we are are I'm actually meet, meeting with my students out at Cool Spring next week um, to to kind of wrap up a semester long research project that was funded by one of our members of the university's board of trustees, Diane Kearns, and it's to it's to really start digging into um the the history of enslavement at the property and also looking at the reactions of enslaved people there and in in neighboring areas in Clark County to John Brown's raid because you know as as I note in the book there's there's threats of arson there's arson that occurs 
Judge Parker writes about um, arson that occurs on his property. And so I'm hoping to use that for, you know, individuals who come out to that, to that site to not only learn about the Battle of Cool Spring and, you know, everything that that, that fight entails, but also to start helping people understand, you know, the broader reactions throughout the Valley to what happened at Harpers Ferry. Because, I mean, you know, if you go to Harpers Ferry National Park, I think you get a really good sense of what happened there and the ripple effects throughout the nation. But this is, this is something that, again, it's, it's so very close mm -hmm. to, to what, you know, har happened at Harpers Ferry. And so we are, we are going to begin, you know, moving forward with, with this project. And my students have uncovered, you know, some, some really interesting things. And what we always have to get creative with is, um, you know, how do we make that available to the public? Mm -hmm. Because we don't have, you know, paid staff out there seven days a week around the clock. And so one of the things that, that we've played around with a little bit is um, augmented reality through an app. So we have an app now at Cool Spring mm. um, that does 360 augmented reality video and also GPS enabled um, audio. So you're walking around and, and voices come on about various, and they're all based on primary accounts. Mm. Um, but again, kind of looking at that soldier experience, but now we're looking to add, add these stories of enslaved people to that app. Mm. Um, which is which you can download for free on the on the Apple Apple Store or uh, Google Play. Wow! Wow! I'm yeah, blown away there. With so we're keeping busy. Yeah, and not just busy, but also the technology you're using for this. That's insane. Um, mm -hmm. Well, I, I I'm almost afraid to ask then of like what are your future plans because <laughs> it seems like the list is just endless. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> Yeah, we, we have, you know, obviously we'll always have the journal and our conferences and, and programs and those types of things. Um, but the Legacies of Slavery Project, um, you know, expanding our, our interpretation out at, at Cool Spring, that's, that's priority one for me. And then in terms of, you know, I've had my, my one colleague ask me the other day, Dr. Hofstra, you know, he said, well, what's your next project? Mm -hmm. You know, this book's not even been out for a month yet. Right. Um, but I have become increasingly interested um, where I live in, in Berkeley County was a very, very strong union, uh, unionist community in Martinsburg. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I, I think my research is going to take me in that direction, really looking at unionists in the valley and how they push back mm. um, and resisted the Confederacy. Yeah, but that, that's definitely a topic that needs, in general, a lot more work. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I remember when I was teaching the Civil War class and I kind of wanted to do like something on the free state of Winston in Alabama and it's like there's mm -hmm. hardly anything written about it. So yeah, yeah, we definitely need more works on on unionists yeah. in the South. So yeah. yeah, I'm looking forward to that yeah. eventually. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, I appreciate you taking the time to talk to us today and um, best of luck with all those many projects. That sounds <laughs> Well, Thanks so much. On 